I hope you know that this is more than just about me. I'm doing this for me, but because I know that there are so many other people out there who are gonna find out that they are on the spectrum, who've already found out and who are struggling Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Paradise and today's video is about autism and how I found out I'm autistic, what it was like before I found out, and how it's been ever since I got the diagnosis. So let's start off with before I knew. I, geez, I had no idea, no idea whatsoever that I was on the spectrum, am on the spectrum, no idea whatsoever. I did know a little bit about autism, very, very little. Um, most of it I had seen in the media. Um, fast forward to about maybe the beginning of 2021. Right now it's July 16th, 2021. The beginning of of this year, I started to look into applying for ABA jobs, applied behavioral analysis. There are autistic people who are against ABA, but that's for another video. I started to apply for ABA jobs, and when hearing about autistic people who are against ABA, being the person that I am, I wanted to know why it was that people were against this and um, I wanted to learn about it so I was you know researching here and there not very in-depth but listening to autistic people and I started to hear women speak about their experiences of autism just because I went into this rabbit hole of research and little by little, just being the curious person that I am, I started to, to, you know, want to know about it. And so I found an article that I will link down below. I read this article and I thought, why do I relate to this so much? And after that, I, I took an Aspie quiz, which I'll also link down below. And once I took this test, that was March of this year. And it said, you could be on the autism spectrum where you likely are. And I dismissed it because I thought, you know, this is an online test. This is very common, by the way, for a lot of autistic people to take these tests and to be like, eh that's it's very unlikely and so dismiss that um and i just kept studying the subject or you know studying what it was like for women to be on the spectrum what i found was that a lot of women's experiences are that their traits were not noticed when they were growing up and a lot of these women they didn't find out till they were 40, 50, someone when they're even in their 70s. And the reason was because what is said is that the research was has mainly been done on men. Now that I've studied this a little bit more, I found that these traits, these non-classical traits, right, that are different from what we've known, these non-classical traits can also be found in men. So it's not just women who are going unnoticed. It's also men and it's also non-binary people and trans people, gender non-conforming people. All of us have gone by the wayside, so to speak, and have gone unnoticed. So it's not just women. This is when I found out this information and it was sometime in April when I said, okay, this is me. 
this is me. Like I, I am on the spectrum and all my traits, you know, we'll go over those later. Honestly, it's, it's a very vulnerable thing for someone to talk about, you know, because a lot of the times it becomes this conversation of like, well, prove it. Like, I don't really see you stimming, which we will talk about. I don't see you. You know, also we expect for someone to be a savant or a genius. We'll talk about that later at another point, right? So April, May, June is when I started to really accept that this was me. When I found out, I was really happy. And this is one of the things that really confuses people who are neurotypical. The reason why so many people who find out that they're autistic are happy with the news is because there's a word that really helps explain how we think. It helps give a word and helps even give you a sense of community and helps you understand yourself in a bigger context, right? And so finding out that I was, I thought no freaking way. And I, I was always interested in stories about autistic people unfortunately a lot of the stories we that we've seen on television have not been played by autistic people but the subject itself really interested me and come to find out there's a reason why i was interested in it you know there was this connection that i felt to it now on may 26 is when i had my appointment to find out whether I was or was not on the spectrum. When I got those results, I felt so happy because right before I got the results, I felt, and this is very common, I felt that they were gonna say, no, you're not on the spectrum. And I felt this way because I had seen so many people say that when they went to see someone, they they told them, nope, you're not. Basically, free to go. Bye. Um, and I heard so many women share their story online on YouTube. But if you look into the research, and I will fucking screenshot. And I will paste it so you can see a journal that literally says, we are un un underdiagnosing women. <sighs> I was scared that they were going to tell me, no, you're not. And the reason why I was scared is because it's super expensive to get an autism diagnosis. I was very fortunate in that I was able to get a diagnosis because here in the States, and I didn't pay for this much, okay, I'll end up sharing how I got my diagnosis if you guys are interested. But here in the States, it costs 3500 If you're lucky, it'll cost you maybe 1800 but it's still a lot of money. So now imagine you can go and get tested and they can say, no, you don't, because the person who's diagnosing you has not done the updated research and doesn't know what to look for. And you have to pay that all over again. So this happens to people. Fortunately, I received my official diagnosis and was told that I am level one and that I do need assistance. And that's what level one means. And I can make another video on that um, in the future. But that is not my concern at the moment. My concern is to, to really get this out there because finding out there is so much emotion. It's a mouthful. There's so much that happens when people find out. And being on the spectrum, personally, and if you're autistic, you can share what the hard parts are about being autistic down below. But for me, so far, the hardest part about being autistic is people's reactions to my diagnosis. Because I've 
I've been autistic my entire life. I've dealt with the autistic things <laughs> my entire life. I've dealt with people thinking I'm weird my entire life. But now that I have a word to explain who I am, people don't really know what to say. People don't really know how to be there for me. And intellectually, I get it, you know? And I hope you know that the reason why I'm sharing this with the world is not so that you can pity me. That's the last thing that you need to think about an autistic person. I think the reason why autism is so stigmatized is because People think that they need to pity autistic people. People think it's something to pity. When really, we just think differently than you. And really, it's just another lens. And we had so much beauty to the world because people can't see through that lens they don't understand it and they belittle it it's almost kind of like colonialism you know where whites saw their culture we my ancestors saw whiteness and white cultures as better than our counterparts. And as we've seen, as we know, indigenous peoples, native peoples of other regions just had a different way of seeing the world. This is hard. <laughs> this is really hard. I want to say, if you are someone that I love dearly and you're finding out online, it's not because I don't care about you. <laughs> it's not because I feel uncomfortable talking to you about it. If anything, it's because I was scared that if I told you, it would go the same way it has gone a few times I've had to share with other people. I've had no negative experiences telling other people. And I just couldn't bear. I couldn't bear negative experiences. couldn't bear not being believed. I couldn't bear the silence, the judgment. It's hard. It's really hard. So I ask that you please listen to autistic people. And if we feel something, just listen. If we tell you we suspect we're autistic, listen. If someone tells you you're they're autistic, ask kind questions, not devil's advocate questions, not sarcastic questions. And if you cannot find kind questions to ask, leave us alone. <laughs> I hope you know that this is more than just about me. I'm doing this for me. But because I know that there are so many other people out there. There are so many other people out there who are going to find out that they are on the spectrum, who have already found out, and who are struggling.
better to tell us that you don't know what to say than not saying anything at all. So, if you made it this far, thank you. That means more to me and to all the people who are autistic out there because you being informed with the subject a little bit more is helpful. Because there are so many people out there who hold so much stigma against us, against the subject in general, and it feels so isolating to face that level of cultural taboo. Thanks for listening. If you have any comments, you can leave them down below. Like, subscribe, and have a great day.